everybody, I'm Christopher Rappler and welcome to Pro The Situation, a show that is focused on solutions, not just excuses. Today I'm here with the chairman of the 2nd Congressional District, Mr. Will Davis, known to us as Mr. Albany. But we're not just going to talk about politics today. What we're talking about, actually, tonight, we are here in Albany, Georgia, in a place that's known as Harlem. And over the past several weeks, uh, Mr. Will Davis have been here uh, giving people food and clothing while it was cold and they were down the street at the Transportation Center for shelter. So, Mr. Davis, thank you and welcome. I appreciate that, Mr. Rappler and Rapco Media. Um, first of all, uh, yes, I'm the second congressional district chairman over the second congressional district for the Democratic Party of Georgia that encompasses 29 counties from Muskogee County all the way down to Thomasville and everything in between. Uh, as you said, tonight is not necessarily about politics, but uh, politics plays a key role in what we'll be talking about tonight which is the unhoused, the homeless, and those that are in need. And so from a community standpoint, we really need to, and I encourage everyone to find out what works for you, but this is a community issue and only the community can solve that. You know, we continue to ask law enforcement, we continue to ask our city leadership, but we're gonna have to have buy-in from the community. Uh, it's been interesting uh, to talk to the unhoused. Uh, there was a gentleman just just walked up. Uh, I, I, they, they know my vehicle now, and so if I'm down here, they're expecting to uh, have the opportunity to receive food or clothing. Uh, this all came about last month when the city opened the transportation center as a warming center. Now, I would tell you I'm not necessarily aligned with utilizing a $12 million building uh, as a warming center. However, it's one of those damn if you do, damn if you don't. If the city doesn't do anything, people will complain. If they do do something, they're going to complain. And so I encourage everyone, if you have any ideas, reach out to me, 229-869-3330. That's Will Davis, a.k.a. Mr. Albany, 229-869-3330. And I say reach out to me, not from the standpoint of this is just a dump session, but we need to be engaged. You know, some of my community involvement is I've just assumed chairman of crime stoppers here in Albany and we have a great opportunity in educating the community on crime stoppers to help us reduce some of this crime. I'm also a member of the Albany Police Department Civilian Review Board where we address issues uh, not necessarily uh, uh, police misconduct, but use of force. We even address issues of them not turn it, turning on their body cam and even accidents. I got a question. Yes. So, you know, you bring that up about, you know, you being a part of that with the Albany Police Department. How often, I know we hear about it around the country, but how often do we run into situations where the officers didn't turn on their body cam? In Albany, it's very rare uh, because there's a, a, a process on the uh, coding of the equipment. Mm -hmm. um, when you exit the vehicle, there's some automation that kicks in. Right. Uh, so, but there have been instances that uh, that hadn't happened, and there have been even instances of officers losing equipment, mm -hmm. and uh, that doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, and I don't like to use the word punishment, but uh, there's an accountability process in place to ensure that uh, they all understand how important uh, that is uh, to keep their gear on them right and to make sure that their gear is function at all times right right yeah I, when you brought that up I just wanted to you know make sure that we clarify right. that because you know it, it, you know when we see things that happen you know around the country right we just want to make sure that in our community right you know it, we're not gonna say that it don't happen right but we just want to make sure that it's at a minimum. Right, right. right. And one thing I would say uh, at a minimum is we talk nationally. A lot of times when we hear individuals talk about uh, certain crimes, 
they're not necessarily local. So when we talk about use of force, if we look in the last 12 months, uh, those actual incidents of use of force have been very minimum. Uh, we do have a lot of incidents where individuals felt that they was done wrong, but after reviewing the body cam and going back through the process of leadership, looking at that, having a conversation with the officers, not necessarily that they're unsubstantiated, but sometimes a lot of emotions get involved. Right. And we need to understand it's a lot like parenting. I was talking to someone the other day. If I'm asking my child to do something, I'm telling my child to do something. So if the police are asking you, then they're giving you a direct command right. or a direct order. And for you to refuse that or not do that, then unfortunately there's consequences. Right. And so I'm not going to come in and say you got to obey the police you know, whatever's going on, that's going to be an individual situation. But understand, life is about choices. Right. And for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Right, right, right. So, you know, and, and, and speaking of the Albany Police Department, you know, a few times I've been down here to uh, volunteer mm -hmm. with you and when it comes to feeding, like right. you say, the unhoused. Mm -hmm. And... What I see, they have they have came through big time. Right. I mean, they bought blankets, they bought mm -hmm. food, they bought coffee. Right. They always, you know, coming down. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, like I love to say, making the difference to right. be the difference in the community. So, and of course, um, you know, unfortunately, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to uh, interview uh, Chief Persley right. doing the homicide right. that was over there on the south side off of Willard. And, you know, we talked about, you know, our communities being accountable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I look at when I see how they come back and they pour into the community, and I can only go by what I see, mm -hmm. and how they pour into the community, you know, I think stuff like that, you know, need to be recognized mm -hmm. in a positive way. Right. Um, because when anything is done negative, right. it's at the forefront. Right. You know, so, you know, I just wanted to say that, that every, you know, yeah, it, it, it are, it is officers that do right. wrong, right. like any human being. Right. Because like you say, emotions come into play. Right. So, you know, so when I look at them doing good, I'm, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, recognize it right. myself that, you know, they are, they're helping their community. Right. Well, I would like if you speak more on the feeding the, the unhoused. So last month, the city um, ran the flyer that they will be open in the warming center, which is a transportation center, anytime that it dips, you know, 32 degrees or below. And so I actually came by that particular, I believe it was a Tuesday night, and just saw the individuals that uh, had a need to use the facility. And what I would tell you, uh, Mr. Rapley, that um, just the being cordial, there was no out of order. It was just a sense of design, I mean, divine appreciation for, you know, having that facility available. And there was some individuals that you could see that may have, may have had some uh, 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 mental incapacities, but when I tell you they came in, everybody scoped the area out and decided, okay, this is where I'm going to go. That's where they went. You know, they had their phones, you know, they, they, they watched the movies, but once it got time for them to bed down, for lack of a better term, they found that spot on the floor in between and it, there was no mess there was no argument there was no fussing right. uh, the uh, city employees that work there uh, they've gotten to know some of them by name uh, and they develop relationships with them and what the city does is they supply the city employees they offer them coffee, uh, water, and hot chocolate, mm -hmm. and then they have blankets. Right. And so those that come in and may need a blanket, they have that for them. They have the, excuse me, the beverages and everything. And they have the use of the, um, the uh, bathrooms. Right. And so seeing that, uh, and 
sitting down and talking to some of them, and again, making that snapshot from appearance, it was like, wow, I wonder when the last time they've eaten or, you know, taking care of their personal hygiene. Right. So I just made this mental note that uh, tomorrow, some way, somehow, I was going to feed them. So just happened to be talking to uh, a friend of mine um, who uh, prefers to remain anonymous, and we talked about it, and they said, it's done. And they called me and said, we have the food ready and everything like that. You know, we came down here, walked up to the bus station, you know, told them that we'll be feeding down here. I mean, they came down here in order, and um, they was really appreciative. You know, like I said, I was down here a few nights myself, and, and like you said, they it was in order. Right. Uh, like I, like we say in church, in church, in decency and in order. Right. Um, everybody was appreciative. Mm -hmm. um, and then even when I came down the second time, when you were able to bless them right. with clothing, mm -hmm. you know, it, you know, it was you, you laid out what they needed to do. Right. It, no one didn't take more than right. they needed to mm -hmm. take. Um, and, and 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 some of the stuff I saw, like when someone said, "Well, I know someone that needs something," they right. still didn't take more than they needed to take. Right. But they did take something to their brother or their sister right. who that was in need. Right. So you know, when I when I when I look at um, what you do for the community, mm -hmm. you know, I, I I just see that more of this need to be done mm -hmm. and, and, and it's all about the partner and collaboration because right. I know we've had conversations before we know not one organization right. can do it all but all the organizations can work together right. to help all absolutely so you know I'm you know when I when I see stuff like that I, I really I really think it need to be right. you know showcased and appreciated mm -hmm. you know it's a lot of it's a lot of news you can put out there that's right. negative, but when we going to talk about the positive right. that's going on in our community? Right. And, and 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 the key thing about the organization, uh, my organization is Level Up Young Man. Uh, it's a nonprofit started in May of 2020 uh, during the height of the pandemic, if you want to say, and it was geared toward male mentoring. And then because of the uh, pandemic, you know, we had some lag time. But we uh, have a foundation that supports us. And coming into this year, I would say we were blessed with the amount of clothing, uh, brand new clothing and shoes uh, was awesome. Now that was an anomaly and we'll probably never receive that amount of clothing ever again. But in doing so, we had an outpouring of support from the community to help us get that in order because everything was in boxes. So with Level Up Young Man, you pour into us, we pour into you. So those volunteers, whether it was an organization or a minimum of a group of four that was able to dedicate sweat equity, for me, for our organization, you know, sweat equity equals community support. So if you gave us that sweat equity, you know, we poured into you with some of the resources that we had available. I, and, I, and I just want to say, say this, it, it just make it plain and simple. When you say sweat equity, they got to put in the work. They got to put in the work. And the work is only give us a minimum of four hours and help us, you know, get organized. And organized is take a box. You dump a box on the table, you fold everything, and we want to try to put it in boxes like we do at the department store because this box may have 20 of these, right. uh, three of these, and a pair of shoes. Right. But they're all different sizes. So we want to get that sorted and then put in boxes because our goal long term would be more intentional of the support. Mm -hmm. And that means if someone has a need, whether they call or whatever, we have a needs assessment form and so they come in a call fill out that form we can go to that row or that box right one or two boxes get what they need versus going through uh, a dozen plus boxes <laughs> trying to find what they need and might not find yeah, it still yeah. and, and, and we call that you know Santa's you know secret workshop you know it, it, it's off in the cut and everything and it's not open to the public but for those who have dedicated their time we greatly appreciate it uh, we've had numerous uh, religious organizations uh, we've supported uh, <clears throat> grandma's uh, open hands uh, they made 
They've supported us with sweat equity. We made a huge donation to them with uh, 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 socks, well not socks, but underwear, t-shirts and everything for the youth at the boys club that they did a giveaway this past Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, we supported uh, Bishop Morris at Harvest Temple. Uh, they've supported us with sweat equity. Uh, we made a nice donation of clothing to them this past Saturday. They went to feed um, and, 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 and give out clothing up at Superior Large on North Slappy uh, across from Walmart. Uh, we made a donation of several bikes to Men on a Mission. And so we're pouring into those other organizations. And as Mr. Rappler said, it's bigger than me. It, it, it's, it's bigger than any one organization. So when we, when we talk about duplication of service, I really don't see duplication of service. I see organizations, particularly nonprofits, not adhering to their mission. And so if we are here to our mission and be willing to truly partner versus trying to have our names and lights, uh, because everything we need in our community, everything we need in Albany, everything we need in Dorothy County, it's right here. It's right here. It's right here. You know, that's why I wanted to do this episode down here at the place where you put the work in, mm -hmm. you know. And of course, you you all see clips as we show different clips mm -hmm. throughout this episode right. of where we was at the secret right. workshop mm -hmm. and, and the different other things right. that we you know you've done. And 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 like you said, everything we need is right here. Mm -hmm. You know, from from the organizations to the resources right. to the media to get right. the word out. Right. You know, it's right here. And I and I you know and I think that. It just need to be said more. Right. It need to be seen more. It need to be heard more. And and once we do that, and once you say, and once everybody come together and start partnering and collaborating, I really see some positive things happening mm -hmm. in the city of Albany right. and helping those in need. Right. And I, I'd be remiss. Uh, we want to thank the owners of the historic Chapman Building in our background, also known as the. Uh, Harlem Barbershop. I uh, want to thank the owners of that and a big thank you to uh, Miss Helen Young, uh, Miss Tia Wanna Malone, and Mr. Henry Master for working to get us access so that one, our volunteers can be out of the elements as we try to uh, uh, do what we were doing for the uh, um, less fortunate in our community, whether it's feeding right. them or donating the clothes. So that does not go unnoticed, and we definitely appreciate them because again everybody's effort and support is at different levels right you, right. you, you know so you know if you don't have the time you know can you make a phone call right and those individuals made phone calls where now we have that relationship and now it's actually where because of what we're doing now I go out this morning early to have breakfast, and somebody says, can I talk to you? Sure. Uh, they know what we're doing, and they have somebody to just have a conversation about wanting to uh, give back and cook. And so now we're hoping that we can coordinate that. Mm -hmm. And for New Year's Eve, hopefully we can give them a, a nice southern New Year's Eve meal. You know? Wow. And, wow. and so wow. we'll be working to uh, close that loop and everything. We've already got permission uh, to do it here and everything. But again, everything we need is here. I think the key thing is communication sometimes and I can be guilty of it wanting to go at it alone right you know closed mouth don't get fed absolutely. So, absolutely unless you start talking to individuals engaging in individuals you'll be surprised that there are people that have similar ideas or like-minded right right and they may not be able to Activate it. Right. But by having a conversation and your piece of the puzzle and my piece of the puzzle, maybe all it needs to bring the puzzle together. Absolutely. If not, Absolutely. we can bring other people in. So again, we'll level up young man. We're about male mentoring. 
but we saw this need in supporting uh, our unhoused and those that are less fortunate. And we have some ideas to talk to our, our city uh, leadership as far as uh, uh, opportunities, as well as the community. Mm -hmm. Because again, it could be me, you know, it could be you. And so, you know, I'm from a humble country, <laughs> country background, so I know poverty up close. You right. know, what you I'm, see I'm now, with you. I'm with what you. you see now is not what was years ago. And so uh, I understand what that looks like. You right. know, again, never been homeless, you know, have had lack of. You know, right, and, and right. so when you have lack of, you look at that, you know, I may be one check or, or, or one person removed from actually uh, having that experience myself. Right. And what I would tell you also, Mr. Rappel, is that mm -hmm. those individuals that came down to partake of the food, I mean, just to have conversation with them. Now, some of them were standoffish at first. Right. But now, I mean, you go, they talk, and say, hey, you you're going to be bringing food tonight or you got some more clothes? We've actually talked to them. Uh, we've got some of them names, and we're trying to uh, work through a process where we can engage other organizations because there are individuals that say, you know, at one time, you know, I had a job at one of these uh, major uh, businesses around here. Right. Hadn't gotten to the point on what happened, but I mean, that's what it is. It is. Fine, how are you? How you doing? Good, good. Good. And so just to hear that conversation and then to see that they're here now, right. it's like whether it was drugs, alcohol or whatever, it requires further conversations. And let's see how we can utilize the magnitude of wraparound service that we have here in Albany to help those individuals, to, right. to, to help them become uh, self-sustainable again, because a lot of them were at one time. You know, and, and when you bring about uh, sustainability and self-sustainability, you know, I, I, I know about those conversations you're talking about. I've had those conversations. And, and when these conversations get so deep and these individuals are so intelligent, and now you start looking like, wondering like, what happened? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and like you said, it, you only, Sometimes it's people that's one check, mm -hmm. a job, a mental breakdown, right. anything that could have happened mm -hmm. that changed their lives. Right. You know, it's not necessarily that income cost them to be out here. Right. They could have, they could have, you know, they could have had a mental breakdown. Exactly. So that's why, you know, you say you got to have these conversations with mm -hmm. them to see what actually led right. to it. Right. Because you know, I, you know, I've heard, I know you heard me like. Man, this person don't have to be this way, right. but this is what happened. Mm -hmm. So instead of you judging, well, they ain't got to be this right. way. Why are we gonna help? Them? You now you got to find out, right. okay, why they're doing this. Right. You know, no matter what the age or where they come mm -hmm. from, it, you know, we we got like you say, you got to find people and you got to find organizations, mm -hmm. like you say, those wraparound services, right. so we can get down to the right. root of it. Yeah. And, and what I would tell you, these people. They're people, they're human. It's been approximately three females, uh, mostly males, and we've been able to help them with, you know, clothing and hopefully we can do more. Mm -hmm. um, the issues and concerns, as you said, whether it was a personal situation or not, we have to find out as a community how to How do we help them not feel so ostracized? Right. The first night, there was seven, the first night we participated, which was the second night of the warming center last month, uh, there was an individual uh, uh, from a local family that one consumed prominent. Uh, they just been released uh, from uh, prison. Um, and then there was others that that this is just what they do, but it was surprising that one individual stated that once he heard that the warmest center was gonna be open, that individual said that they talked to 20 people and not one of those 20 people were in the warming center. And I was like, why? And they said a lot of people are embarrassed. 
So they would like, rather weather this weather, this cold, than to come in out of the cold. And when they said that they're shame, we have to figure out how we can change that narrative. You know, when you speak about that, and there's going to be a video showing a, gen a couple of gentlemen talk to us doing um, the last time mm -hmm. I was down here volunteering, and when you brought that up, they said they needed tents. So it's like, wow, they would have rather have a tent mm -hmm. and just do what they do. Right than to come from outside. And like you said, a lot of times, you know, they're embarrassed. And when, you, and, when and, and, and let me say this, and I just wanna look in the camera when I say this, when you volunteer to help somebody, make sure you make them feel welcome. Don't make it seem like it's about you. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't do anything to make it seem like you're showcasing them in a way just, just to make yourself popular. Because I see that a lot on social media around the country. And, and, and thankfully, I don't see that a lot here. Right. And I just, you know, I just want to make sure. Speaking of Mathis, how you doing? What up, bro? All right. All right. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Speaking of Mathis, he just came up. <laughs> that was uh, Mr. Henry Mathis, uh, who again helped us uh, get uh, access to the building, and he's just riding through and everything. But again, we appreciate him for everything that he does. Right, and and, and this and, and and my thing, and I, and I like with the gentlemen and and the and the women that donate behind the scenes. Right. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Right. I'm good. So, you know, just just think about that when, when you're helping these people, that they are human. And they have the spirit of discernment that you're doing it for the wrong reasons. So just think about that. And I just wanted to say right. that myself. Right. Yeah. And again, um, we're looking forward to doing this because as we transition from winter to summer, they're still going to be out there. And now you got an overheating yeah. situation. Right. And so I know uh, I'm a Leadership All Being 04 alum, life member. I make sure that life member. Uh, <laughs> but we did Poverty Day. And during Poverty Day, you know, it was shared with us there are some individuals that. I'm not gonna say you can't house, but they will utilize that facility, but they will leave. Mm -hmm. You know, they come in for that moment, but to say that they will stay all night or all day, right? because that's just them. And for those, I don't have the answer. I just think that we need to find a way to make that opportunity and that facility available and that we are able to bring those wraparound services right so that we can figure out for those that we can help to become self-sustainable right those that may have fallen on the radar for other type of services that we get them the help that they need mm -hmm. and then those others just got to keep doing what we're doing. Right, right. And and, and, and and that's the key. We got to keep doing what mm -hmm. we're doing. Um, before we wrap up, okay. what is your goal for 2024? Wow. 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 My goal for 2024 is to have a sustainable infrastructure for our unhoused. Looking for accommodations where we can provide bedding, showers, clothing, and wraparound services. That's just one of them. The other one is housing is much needed in our community and there's various degrees of the thought process on what housing looks like. Right. I rode around today <laughs> actually looking at, oh, that building we good for what I just see it. Right. Again, but it's about talking to the powers to be. Right. And everything is about funding. Right. 
Uh, but the, with the housing issue is there's great opportunities to make sure that we're utilizing uh, the monies that we have available from the federal government. But also we need to listen to the communities on what they want and need in their communities. There are a lot of new construction that are coming up in certain areas that I don't think the infrastructure is there. Hmm. Trust me, I'm not knocking anybody's thought process, but I don't think that you can build a $200,000 property in certain areas. Hmm. The infrastructure is not there. And when you and 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 and, and, for, and when you say infrastructure, we want to we want to make right. it simple. What when I say infrastructure, yes. what I mean is, do we have street lighting? Okay. Is that neighborhood? <laughs> Let's be honest, consider it safe. Okay. As we consider it. So to build in an area that's not known to be safe and you're missing street lighting mm -hmm. and you're missing uh, certain services, I mean, neighborhood watches are a great thing. Right. Some areas don't have those established. But when you build new, you have a tendency to attract the, the attention of the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. And so if that infrastructure is not there, now you're looking at it being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing too is that, again, I don't knock nobody economics, but certain things are just not feasible to me as a homeowner. Right. There are certain areas that it doesn't make sense to build a $100,000 plus uh, property. When you mean property, you talking I'm about? I'm talking about a house. house. Okay. Right, right. Because if you do, it's only going to, the question is, will it ever be worth what you paid for it? Mm -hmm. For me, I think that uh, we have properties now that the city is looking at, and there's a contractor, and they're talking about it, and I think that's a great idea. I think the opportunity exists, though is that why don't we look at our law enforcement or our, uh, our, our uh, EMTs or that group of people who we know uh, need housing mm -hmm. and we appreciate the raises that they've gotten so far, mm -hmm. but we can do more. Give them that opportunity. So now we put law enforcement in the community mm -hmm. Make sure we find every incentive out there that we can help them mm -hmm. to become homeowners. Mm -hmm. We have recruits graduate from the academy. We have single moms. This is not knocking anybody from the community. But we want to make sure that that infrastructure is part of self-sustainability. Right. You must be able to afford it. Right. Homeownership is no longer renting. Right. You got upkeep. Right. If something breaks, you got to make sure it gets fixed. If right. not, it's going to deteriorate. So basically, you you saying the people that move into these homes, they got to be responsible. They got to be responsible. So do you think, and when you say we don't have the infrastructure, you, you actually saying that these people actually, just be honest, we need to be trained. We need to be trained, and part of that training is, and the, the, the city, they, they put forth effort, but I would tell you there's opportunity uh, for that, is, is that uh, budgeting, financial literacy, and home buying goes more than just getting qualified. Right. You know, that sustainability on what can I look forward to, because we get excited about it. But when a pipe bursts, you know, uh, anything, a roof get damaged, it's great to have insurance, but there's always deductibles. Right. The lawn service, I mean, you live in an apartment, somebody else cuts it. You don't live in an apartment, you gotta cut that yeah, lawn. I get, I let the neighbors gonna be complaining. And, and, and if you're like me, just don't like cutting grass, you, <laughs> you got a heck of a lawn care bill. Right. So again, <laughs> going back to the original question for 2024, uh, really uh, peeling the onion back on uh, the issue of our unhoused right. and looking for some long-term sustainable means of ensuring that. And we didn't get this way overnight. Right. And we're not going to be able to fix it overnight. You know, I mean, we don't have that magic wand, but I think that uh, by this time next year, 
we should have some pretty solid systems and processes in place to show that we've really improved and one of those would be a designated facility and it would be great if it was year round. Got a question? Uh, yes. Do we have the political leadership to make this happen? We do. For me, everything is relational. We talk about four votes. But who's actually reaching across the aisle mm -hmm. to ensure that if I help you get what you need for your ward, I want to know that I can depend on you to get what I need for my ward. Right. Now, how that prioritization works is about conversations. Right. But we don't get a lot accomplished because we have poor relationship from our elected officials. And I'm not laying the blame on any one group, any one ethnic group, or anything like that. They know how they operate. They know what their relationship is. And there's no different than me. We look at I'm going into a new year. There's some things I'm gonna have to change about me. Right. So if I look at my particular war and say, wow, what did I get accomplished? Then I need to be honest with myself and ask myself why. If I say I didn't get four votes, the question is why? Because it's simple for me, Mr. Rapley. If I don't get four votes, I'm gonna go ringing the bell in my ward. Y'all need to show up. Y'all need to help me convince my counterparts that this is what we need. I don't need to get in a pissing contest with six other people. I don't need to fuss and fight with six other people about why you doing me like this and y'all always do this and I never get this. Ring the bell. And ringing the bell is? Ringing the bell is engaging your community via phone call, walking that community. Neighborhood watchers is an awesome thing. Mm -hmm. And you should know your ward. But listening sessions, forums, and not trying to go it alone in those meetings, but letting your ward know that, hey, this is an issue. I want you all's perspective. And if we're aligned, we're all in. Now, if I decide to go in, you know, Long Ranger style, right. then if they don't support me, that's on me. Right. Because again, it's for the better good, which is of the war. And so for me, I uh, want to see level up young man, uh, prosper in uh, being good stewards in the uh, community. Uh, again, our mentoring is very important. So even though we focus on the homeless because it just hit that spot right now, Level Up Young Man, uh, 501c3 nonprofit for male mentoring. We will be reaching out. We will be doing all call uh, to males to help us mentor. When we look at crime, which hopefully we can get back together and talk crime. We will. Uh, crime is not about the police. We can say uh, uh, the law enforcement being understaffed is a concern, but uh, uh, Chief Persley and uh, uh, Deputy Chief Luster and that staff, uh, they're all in. They're, when I tell you those people are committed to the community, uh, they are. And so people don't see that other side because of the criticism. But hear me this. Law enforcement, police, is an after-the-fact response. And so when they come in, particularly with the recent homicide that we've had, and they come in and go door to door and say, hey, we noticed that you have a camera. Can we access your camera? And you say no. Are you hiding something, hindering something, or you may be afraid? I'm not judging. If they go door to door and your response is, why y'all always down here? You don't never go to the west side. <laughs> or I haven't seen anything, but your neighborhood is the center of activity. This is a community thing. Law enforcement, and we're talking APD now, but whether it's Albany State, 
Albany Technical College, Doherty County Police, Doherty County Sheriff. They need the community support. And the community support is calling the tip line on the app, calling 911, or getting in touch with Crime Stoppers. And you'll be hearing more about Crime Stoppers next year. To end it all, our crime situation is a community situation and it's a parenting situation. Now we can blame it on everything else, but if the community get involved and we do a better job of parenting, meaning what is my child doing, who is my child hanging out with, and what are my checks and balances to make sure that I'm accountable for my child, then that interaction with law enforcement won't be as much as it is now. Well, that's what pro the situation is all about. No excuses, just solutions. Finding, it, it, finding solutions with common sense methods. Uh, tonight I was here with Mr. Will Davis, Mr. Albany. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate the time. And we will see you next time on Pro the Situation.